The only thing missing is you. He can't be too happy right now, Bucky Waters. Tom Young very upset at this point. His team is down by 11. Yeah, it's a, it's a frustrating kind of thing because you, you just can't point to one thing. So far, Texas has controlled the tempo. They're doing just about what they want to do. And the big piece in the chess game for Tom Young is James Bailey. And they have not been able to bring that into play. Tom Brown is in the game at guard in place of Hefley for Rutgers. The Longhorns going at their same five. At five, by the way, has started 16 consecutive games as Duncan misses the jumper, but a loose ball foul, and they'll stay right there. It's against the Longhorns. Personal is on Gary Goodner, his first, only the third team foul in the entire game against the Horns. Texas determined to cut off that inside game. They have built a fence around, around James Bailey, and they're going to defy Rutgers to hit from the uh, perimeter at least uh, three or four before they go out and play honest. Ball is kicked by Moore, so Rutgers again will inbound. Scarlet Knights trailing the Longhorns of Texas, 60 to 49, with 14:46 to play. The winner of this game will play North Carolina State Tuesday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Televised nationally by the Mizlou Television Network, as Bailey hits the jumper. His first points of the second half. He has 10 for the game. 60-51, Longhorns lead it. 14-24 to play. Rutgers coming down the floor now, extending their pressure a little bit. Be interesting to see how the Horns handle it. Tom Brown commits the foul. His first. Team fouls against Rutgers three in this half. Longhorns with two. Non-shooting foul. Krivax down the lane, dishes off pretty to Brannion for the bucket. Another dimension of Krivax, ability to find the open man. Go down the lane, penetrate, under control, very simple. James Bailey, they came to see him do that, and he delivered the mail. Here's the long pass to Moore again, ahead of the field, and the shot is blocked by Bailey. Texas looking for a foul, it's not called, as Brown gives it off to Copeland on the turnaround. Abe Lemons, very upset that he didn't get a foul or a goaltending or something. An 11-point Texas lead has been cut to seven, 62-55, with still 13-25 to play. Revax off, makes the bucket. He was pushed off by Brown, kept his movement, and put it up. And it counts. Boy, you talk about a pure shooter. That's one thing. This guy is on the run. All right, we're going to have a chance to see Bailey go above the square, take a perfectly thrown pass, alley -oop and a gouge. No defense against that one. Now we see Texas retaliate. Johnny Moore looking, looking, not intimidated. Bailey did get him a little bit with a body. I don't think there's any question about that. I don't think it was a goaltending. I think he caught it on the way up. Krivax in the meantime makes the three-point play and the Longhorns create another turnover. Here's Krivax flying it up the right side. 65-55, Texas by 10 with 13 minutes exactly to play in the game. Here's John Moore from outside. No good. The rebound, though, to Branion right up with the follow. He missed it. Again underneath is Goodner. It doesn't go, but he is fouled by Hollis Copeland. Rutgers is supposed to be the superior board team, and right now Texas is getting second and third shots. That's something that's not supposed to happen. That's one of the reasons that Tom Young's down there gnawing on that towel with such enthusiasm. Gary Goodner thus far with six points. He'll go to the line for two shots, a 67% free throw shooter. Short on the first. Would you believe that that is the first free throw missed by either team tonight? Texas now five of six from the free throw line as Kelvin Troy replaces Tom Brown. He's supposed to do something about the rebounding. Uh, a very aggressive youngster, good board man, good athlete. And right now Rutgers is being beaten down the floor and they're being beaten on the boards. He should give them a little quickness and a little board strength. Goodner misses them both. It's Rutgers ball trailing it by 10 with 12.40 to play. 65-55, Longhorns led 48-42 at the half. Rodney Duncan off to Bailey. Double teamed and taken away. Gary Goodner picked Bailey's pocket. 
stuffed it right in his sinuses. Good pressure by uh, Texas. They don't give you the illusion that they're coming at you that hard, but they are resilient. Brandon, checked by Anderson, gives off to Goodner, fakes Bailey, and puts it home. Right out of his pro kids, huh? 67-55, <laughs> the Longhorns lead it with 12 minutes to play in the game. Bailey inside, pretty move, doesn't go, but the rebound is chased down by Krivax. Good save. Hustle again for the Longhorns. And Abe Lemon said that his club would not muscle anybody underneath. Good move. Here's Baxter. Oh, yes. Charge is called against Baxter, but the bucket counts. And a foul goes against Baxter, his first of the game. A lot of beef coming down the lane. Took guts to draw the charge on this one. His quickness, a little give and go. Abdel Anderson, a very slender forward, stood his ground. Wisely didn't try to reach or block the shot. Had good defensive position. Held it. Paid a price. 69-55, Texas right here. Let's pause for these messages. For the first time, Lynn Nightingale and Ron Shaver together in Ice Capades. See the electrifying and thrilling performances of these two Canadian champions, Lynn Nightingale and Ron Shaver, exclusively in this year's Ice Capades. The Ice Capades come to Austin April 13th to 16th for six performances at the UT Special Events Center. Call 471-7733 for information. A family's financial future should be secure. That's why so many families in Austin bring their future to Lamar Savings. As your family financial center, we're over $145 million strong, home-owned and operated, and we care about you and your family. So we have savings plans, home loans, personal loans, retirement plans, and many more services. So for your secure financial future, and mine, remember to think happy, think Lamar. 11.33 to play, the Scarlet Knights' Tom Young talking things over. His club trails now by its largest deficit, 14. Still an awful lot of time left, Howard. 11 and a half minutes is eternity in a basketball game. And although Rutgers is not the great explosive transition team that it was a few years ago when it went to the Final Four, they still have some fine athletes, and they can come back at you. This is Rodney Duncan. Rebound chased down by John Moore. Duncan cannot find the bottom. Normally a very good outside shooter. Larry Lembo on top of the call calls the charge against John Moore. That is his third. Old double O had a clear four that time. Tried to put some uh, class A moves on. I think it was a good call. He was backing in, but he is awfully, awfully quick. Tom Brown has checked in for the Scarlet Knights, replacing Rodney Duncan. Rodney's job was to get that ball down inside. Tom Brown's going to do that, as he did just there. Bailey can't find it either. Longhorns coming up the floor. This is Branion. Ball knocked out of bounds by the Scarlet Knights. It'll be Texas ball with 10.53 to play, and Texas leading at 69.55. From the corner, Branion. He must have shooting lessons with Krivax because he's at 14 tonight, only averaging 12 a game. They really have choked in New York, haven't they? Yeah, right. <laughs> They're playing great. Rutgers 27 and 14 lifetime at Madison Square Garden. Texas 6 and 3 lifetime at the Garden. This is Tom Brown. <laughs> Brown's a junior college. Oh, great lead pass. Rutgers again caught napping. I would have to term this Texas team opportunistic. Very good. They just, they just seem to be playing, and you make a mistake, and you pay right then. The critique is immediate, and it's usually a field goal. 73-57, Texas way out in front with 10 minutes to go in the game. This is their biggest lead. The defense has been a, a total nuisance. 
They seem to be in the passing lane when Rutgers is moving on the perimeter, and it's just very difficult to get that ball down inside the Bailey. Tom Brown from the top of the key. It won't fall for the Knights as Bailey chases it down. First down, hold on. There's been some talk, Bucky, about whether or not James Bailey is going to return to Rutgers next year. He is only a junior. Of course, a lot of the pro folks are looking at him. Well, he has all the tools to be a, a fine professional center. And the, the amounts of money that are going around now, you, it's hard to fault someone for being an instant millionaire. I really believe that another year in college would enhance his value. That is, if he isn't injured, and that's you can make a great point to uh, someone who's able to make the transition and take the money right now. Branyan takes it away and returns down the other way for the bucket. Branyan has really turned it on here on the second half. He has 18 points, 12 of those coming in the last 11 minutes. Lembo makes the call on John Moore. I believe that's his fourth. The one thing we don't know is how deep this Texas team is. They really haven't gone to their bench very much, particularly in the backcourt. But then if I had Moore and Krivax, I don't know how much substituting I do either. Alice Copeland right there checks in for Rutgers. And Brent Boyd, a sophomore from Baton Rouge, checks in for Texas, replacing John Moore. With a cold guard in the game for Texas now, would be a good time for Rutgers to come on down the floor and try to up-tempo with a good press. 16-point lead for Texas. Rutgers with the all-court pressure. Now they slough off. Interesting Baxter stays in the backcourt against pressure and helps to bring it up. The guards go on down the floor, which makes it very difficult for Rutgers to press because their big men have to come back to apply the pressure. They just take your defense and turn it inside out. I told you old Abe was slick. <laughs> Still 8.40 to play in the game, but Texas in command. Look at that play and a great block by James Bailey. Bailey puts it up. Finally banks one in from the outside. That might be his first outside shot of the game. Although he has 14 points. I'm sure Texas would be delighted if he took that shot the rest of the game. That's not where he wants it. That's not where he's effective. The defense is creating good things. We're going to have a chance to see it again. Pass by good Krivax. Bounce Brilliant pass. inside. Beautiful bounce pass. And there comes King James from the weak side. Was that a foul? <laughs> Tough call. Here's a steal by Steve Heffley. Two on two Rutgers break. Tom Brown with a lefty jump. Brown has hit his last three in a row, and Texas calls for timeout with the score. Texas 75, Rutgers 63. Let's pause for a minute. Some pizza places have low lighting, so you can hardly see the pizza. Uh, honey, didn't we order pepperoni? I think so. That's what I thought, but this tastes like a napkin. <laughs> Bob, it is your napkin. At Mr. Gaddy's, we're proud of the pizza we serve. It's not only delicious, it's beautiful, too. Mr. Gaddy's, the most delicious pizza you've ever seen. Mr. Gaddy's is the answer to a pizza lover's prayer. If you're a pizza lover friend, I know we'll see you there. What makes KVET, one of America's great radio stations, the best country music in the world? Outstanding personalities. Jim Travis, Arlie Duff, Sammy Allred, Penny Reeves, Jerry K. Green, Mark Jones, and Lydia Anderson. One of the state's best news departments with Jim Ribble and Sports with Larry Carlson. Austin's only radio professional weather staff anchored by James C. Fiddler. Just some of the reasons why the 24-hour country giant, KVET, is truly one of America's great radio stations. Texas will have possession of the ball when that confab breaks up. Tom Young, seen his team go down by as many as 16. They now trail by 12. A good timeout by Texas. Uh, Rutgers had run off uh, a few quick ones. With that big fat lead, Abe did not want them to go to sleep. Dangerous pass, but successful to break the pressure. I think if that lead is dwindled to about 10, you're going to see Johnny Moore come back in that game very quickly. Oh, pretty drive by number 42, Gary Goodner. 
He got around Bailey and just took home the mail. Ten points for Goodner, 77-63 Texas. Missed shot by Copeland. Texas continuing to force Rutgers to shoot from the outside. That time Bailey was open in the post and they passed him up. Crevax, pretty drive, doesn't go. Here's Tom Brown leading the charge. Good defensive play by Crevax, playing both ends of the court, and they're going to jump it up. That's one of the disadvantages of bringing the ball up the middle, particularly on a dribble. You set yourself up for a hustling defense as we had that time. Coming from behind, here's the turn, the dunk from way out. Heffley thought about drawing the charge and then thought better of it. Might have felt like he was run over by a Mack truck if he stayed in there. <laughs> Longhorns lead it with 6.55 to play, 77-63. Things go as they are going right now. It'll be Texas, North Carolina State Tuesday night in the finals. 8 o'clock Eastern time will be televised nationally on the Mislu Television Network. Branion gets away from his man. The bucket goes, but a charge has been called on Branion. That time, Steve Heffley stood his ground and took the charge. Texas is in total control right now. They're doing just about anything they want. And this might come as a surprise to the Eastern fans, but I am very impressed with this Texas team. Moving the ball at will. Good drive, going to the hoop. Heffley just did get there in time. Of course, quoting the rule that has been so controversial all year, when the weak side defensive man moves in front, was he there before the driver left the floor? That time, I think it was a good call. Heffley makes the front end of the one and one. A 69% free throw shooter. Heffley with nine points. Again, the all-court pressure. Rutgers trailing Texas, 79-65. Still six and a half to play. Prevax finds Boyd, the open man, and the shot is blocked, and a great save almost. Because they say almost is only good in hand grenades and horseshoes, Buck. Yeah, and I'll tell you, Texas is having no difficulty at all with that press. That time, Rutgers put James Bailey on the ball. So that negated the long pass that's been burning Rutgers, but they hit the short man and they turn it into a quick three on two. Just Ty beautiful. Tyrone Branion, 16 second half points, 22 for the night. Shot is missed and the rebound to Goodner. Why they cover each other so very well. <laughs> they're, they're sure an interesting team. Here's Krivax, all by himself, over Abdul Anderson. It's what you call carving. They are just simply taking a leg, an arm, whatever they want when they come down the floor. It's a very embarrassing night for Rutgers. Inside pass intercepted off of Bailey. Texas with an 18-point lead, their biggest of the night. And a lot of the Rutgers diehards are already departing Madison Square Garden. Five and a half to play. This is Krivax. Surprising it didn't go. Abe Lemons has not cut off the offense yet, and I think that's smart. There's five minutes and a few seconds left, but his team has great momentum right now, and I think it would probably be a mistake for them to try to put it on ice. And Rutgers had made no move so far that they're going to they're going to have any kind of a run at getting back in this game. Hollis Copeland checks in, and that man wants to talk things over. With 5.13 to play, Texas 83 and Rutgers 65. In case you missed the first game, North Carolina State defeated Georgetown in overtime, 86-85, to 85, in an absolutely exciting basketball game. Not only was it an overtime, the whole game was very well played, Bucky. I'm sure you'll agree. And North Carolina State... Right now, it looks like they're going to be Texas, and that looms to be a beauty on Tuesday. Yeah, it will be interesting, and we certainly don't want to jinx anybody, but again, we're directing this telecast to the fans in Texas, and if they only saw a little bit of that first game, uh, it will be an interesting matchup because North Carolina State is a, is a transition team, extremely quick, uh, very young. Just a few years ago, North Carolina State won the NCAA championship, 
No one is here that was uh, on that team. They're young, quick, deep. They play exciting basketball, and they're playing their best basketball at the end of the year. They were picked to finish last in the Atlantic Coast Conference, came on with a strong run, and were one game from tying for first place. Does he look like he's ahead by 18? No, he never looks happy. He never looks like he's enjoying things, but he is. He doesn't miss very much. He reminds me of the head coach at Princeton, Pete Carrill. He doesn't look like he's ever enjoying anything either. Uh, this they, year he didn't. Howard, these are two different breeds of cat because Abe Lemons is really loose. Uh, Pete, Pete doesn't get loose very much. Well, Abe's club is way out in front by 18 with 5.13 to play. They break the pressure with ease. Abe had the courage to tell me before this game, he rolled his eyes and he said, these are the best basketball teams I've ever seen. We don't belong here. Hey, is he doing it? Is he putting a hype job on somebody? Yeah. This is Tom Brown off the iron. And it's Texas chasing down the loose ball. They got another two on one break. Branion one more time. Brandon with 24, excuse me, Buck. James Bailey is still still giving his card to people out there to let him know he's on the floor because he can't get a pass. Heffley misses the shot. Heffley with his own rebound. Try to dish it off, and it's Texas one more time coming up with the loose ball. This has become more of the, like a public mugging. Total <laughs> control. The Longhorns are in total control. 4.15 to play. One of the few bad passes that Texas has thrown tonight. Texas leading by 20. Well, the Southwest Conference has to feel pretty good. Arkansas's success in the NCAA, national TV, and here come the Texas Longhorns, and they are for real. I'm impressed. Krivak's throwing the long lob pass. Excellent position. Baxter has his man boxed off. There's no weak side help. Forcing Rutgers, Steve Heffley, to crawl up the back from behind. It's a clinic, ladies and gentlemen. Texas has put on a clinic in Madison Square Garden, and they've taken a pretty good Eastern basketball team, and they've cut them to ribbons. Delighted to be bringing this game to the fans on KTBC in Austin, Texas. Baxter misses the free throw. Baxter with 19 points. The Rutgers didn't exactly blow anybody out to get to this point in the uh, NIT. At home, they beat Army in overtime by two. And then again at home, they won by one over Indiana State and the outstanding Larry Bird. Quite frankly, in the, in the Army game, that they won by two, they were lucky to win by two, really. And the same with the Indiana State game. That's not to take anything away from the club because I think Rutgers has played very well this year, as evidenced by their 23 and 6 mark. I was impressed the one time I saw them in the victory over Syracuse when Syracuse was playing very well. Right. So I know they can play. Texas, uh, Texas absolutely has dominated all night long. Copeland with 19. Rutgers putting on the all court press with 345 to go. Revax gets away, puts it up. This one doesn't go, but Duncan is called for the foul. I think that's one of the few times tonight that, uh, particularly Krivax, that, that it, it looked like a solo job that uh, maybe somebody was playing for stats uh, because normally they have just hit the open man and they just haven't taken any selfish shots. What a release. Krivax with 24. Tyrone Brannion also 24 points. He ought to ensure that release with Lloyds of London. Yeah. 88-66, Texas their biggest lead, 22 points with 3.35 to go in the agony for the Scarlet Knights and the ecstasy for the Longhorns. And I guarantee you, Abe will have the New York press eaten out of his hand. If he hasn't already. All right, on the turnover against Boyd. Pass to Copeland from Duncan. Oh. Copeland with the lone bright spot for Rutgers tonight with 21 points. Grevax doesn't stop shooting. And Goodner on the follow. 
has to be a long night for Rutgers. They're a much better basketball team than this. They've had their candy taken away, but the thing I'm sure that's disappointing Coach Tom Young is they're really not hustling. They're just taking it. All right, Texas is hustling. Duncan breaks up the two-on-one fast break. No foul. It'll be Texas ball. As Abe Lemon starts to substitute, Dave Shepard comes in the game, along with Ovi Dotson. Tyrone Branion and Jimmy Krivax come out of the game between them, 49 of Texas's 90 points. Give Darrell Royal a little credit, too. Not only was he a great football coach and athletic director, but he has gone out and recruited a basketball coach that's going to do several things. He's going to win games for Texas, and he's also going to fill the stadium. Well, Abe Levin's getting his fill now of substitutions. He also has inserted John Danks into the game. 90 to 68, the Longhorns in control. Going to get a charging foul against number 44, Dave Shepard. Well, the shock troops are in now. The reserves are in for, for Texas. Abe, I'm sure, would like to give everyone a chance to get in the game and play, and I'm sure he has no desire to to uh, burn Rutgers uh, severely. Just being in the finals in a national tournament is enough. He is not a vindictive man. Hollis Copeland with 22 points. He'll get another. Twenty-three for Copeland. Another substitution comes into the game. Stan Nance comes into the game for Rutgers. Replacing Rodney Duncan, who sits down. That's the story right there. 90 to 70. Texas on top, still 225 to play. Give Abe Lemons a chance to put some more people in the game, Buck. Well, I'd like to say, you know, it's a long time to go and watch for a Rutgers comeback, but but so far <laughs> there just hasn't been any indication of that. Texas just seems to handle everything Rutgers does. Foul is called against the Longhorns. Getting a little rest down there is Gary Goodner. And Keith Stevens comes into the game for Texas, replacing Gary Goodner. Now, Bucky, coming into this game, you would not have given Gary Goodner much of a shot to stay with James Bailey on the surface of their reputation. Well, that's true, and Goodner played well, but more than that, it was the team concept. The matchup defense, uh, and that's basically what it is. You know, it's like an amoeba. It seems to reach out, know where the good shooters are, but the one person they always had a tag on was Bailey. And even early, when, when Rutgers was hitting the perimeter shot, uh, Texas was very happy that that ball wasn't going inside. They lived with a couple of, of uh, very exciting alley-oop passes, but they were really in control, and Rutgers never really did consistently what they wanted to do. They just bided their time and ran their stuff. Stan Nance just absorbed that charge. And here's a steal. Kelvin Troy will jam it. And he missed the dunk. He has to be really embarrassed. Does that typify the night for Rutgers? Or exactly. What? If one play typify the night, that did. Kelvin Troy has to be really embarrassed right now. Oh, one of those long nights. You know, we talked about earlier the kid in Madison Square Garden with the big play. There's Troy. And threw it down, trying to jam it too hard. He caught the back of the rim, and I know he wishes he could find just a little crack in that floor and disappear. Yeah. Foul is called on Stan Nance of Rutgers. Matt Madlinger is in the game for Rutgers. Krivax, who left with 25. Tyrone Brannion had 24, but he had 18 of those in the second half when the game was still very much in doubt early in the second half. It was a six-point game at half. And I think most of us kind of expected Rutgers to regroup and come barreling back. Texas would have none of it. Steal by the Longhorns. Shot us missed off the glass by Shepard. Minute and 35 to go. And everything is getting very raggedy out there as Boyd on a breakaway lays it in. It's turnover city. It's, it's very hard for the reserves to get in a game like this and look good. Uh, it's, it's really out of control. And the only thing that can happen now is for the clock to move as fast as possible. Texas by 20, and it's going to be 22. The bucket counts and a foul. That's academic, but I don't know that that basket should have counted. I believe that Texas player coming from the weak side actually pushed that ball down through, touched it while it was in the cylinder. Well, Dave Shepard, it's a chance for a three-point play. His first points of the night. 
Bailey on the rebound with a minute and ten to go. Texas has put this one away a long time ago. They lead 94-72. Matlinger. You know, like you say, Bucky, the shock troops are in, and they're not giving up. They're in there yeah. still showing full court pressure. They're having the time of their lives. Madison Square Garden, 20-point lead, and they're moving the ball nicely. Look at that. Good move by Dave Shepard. Nice drive. Not bad knowing you got a guy like that sitting on the bench. You know, it's really interesting, Howard. I'm watching the Texas bench, and I, I realize I shouldn't do this because the fans cannot see it on the monitor, but they're very... Uh, Blase about the whole thing like you know what's a big deal we just came up here and blew a pretty good team right out of Madison Square Garden does that surprise you East <laughs> 25 points for Copeland as Rutgers Copeland puts it up again they are really crashing the boards like everything counts and they're going to jump it up with 14 seconds to play all that's left for Texas is the outside shot of scoring 100 Dave doesn't look too concerned about it Texas really isn't jumping up and down with that much excitement. Bailey with a nice move, but it doesn't go down. Ball goes out of bounds off of Rutgers. Texas ball with nine seconds to play. This is Shepard from the left side. He wishes the game was still going on. That's going to be the last shot of the game. Final score. As Abe Lemons, who doesn't look like his team just won by 20, walks off the court. Final score, Texas 96, Rutgers 76. We'll be back to recap the game in just a minute. Ellis and Salazar Garage and Body Shop, serving Austin for 24 years, member of the Independent Garagemen's Association. Ellis and Salazar Garage and Body Shop, 211 East Riverside Drive. Come and let me show you a house that's made for you. A home with a lovely fireplace, a restful porch swing too. A window to let the sun in. A place when the kids are grown, let Heaton take you to this place, let Heaton take you home. Heaton Real Estate, marketing fine new homes and already established homes. So when you're ready to buy your new home, let Heaton take you home. Heaton Realtors, 12701 Research Boulevard. When you started out, you knew how long the road would be. There were days the work would end, the path was hard to see. But you made it, that's what matters in the end. And all you need is Capital, my friend. It takes hard work to become a professional, and Capital National's unique executive and professional department can help you make the most of it. He's going to be fine. <laughs> High score for the Longhorns of Texas in this 96-76 victory was Jim Krivax, who had 25. But the big story in the second half, Bucky Waters, was Tyrone Branion. Had 24 for the game, 18 of those coming in the second 20 minutes of basketball. We've said it all night. Texas deserved to win. Very impressive. An outstanding final on Tuesday night for national TV in Ms. Lou. That'll be at 8 o'clock Eastern Time, 7 Central on the Mislu Television Network. Our thanks to the folks at KTBC at Austin, Texas. Been an outstanding evening for the Longhorns. They will meet North Carolina State on Tuesday night. Winners over Georgetown in overtime tonight, 86 to 85. Again, for Bucky Waters, this is Howard David. We remind you that coming up next on KTBC, KTBC, we will join in progress the Carol Burnett Show. But Texas and Abe Lemons, uh, they're going to spend a very peaceful night and a peaceful tomorrow, Bucky Waters, as they get ready for Tuesday. They can really enjoy the city. It always is more enjoyable after you've had a win, especially here in the Garden. All right, at Madison Square Garden in New York, the final story, Texas 96, Rutgers 76, Howard David and Bucky Waters saying so long from Madison Square Garden in New York.